the teachings of Rabbi Ephraim Sprecher, Dean of Students at Diaspora Yeshiva on Mount Zion, Jerusalem. Today's shear is, how can we personally accept the Torah? So, if you look at your source sheets on side number one, this is Masechta Avot. How do I personally accept the Torah? The Mishnah says on side number one, Akavya ben Mahalal el Oimer. Akavya ben Mahalal says, Histakel bishlosha devarim. If you meditate on three principles, meditation is a Jewish idea. Histakel means to meditate. So the non Jewish world got it from the Mishnah. Histakel bishlosha devarim. If you meditate on three principles, then you will never come into the hands of sin. What are the three, three principles a person should meditate? Da Mayan Bata, know from where you came from, Wulif on Ataholech and where you're going, Wulif Naimi Ata Otit Litendin the Cheshbon, and before whom you are destined to give a judgment and an accounting. So the Mishnah says that we judge ourselves after death, we judge ourselves in front of God. Wulif Naimi Ata Otit Litendin the Cheshbon before whom you are destined to give a judgment and an accounting. Now the Mishnah repeats, Ma'ayin Bata, from where do we come? Iti Pasirucha. Lan Ataholech, Bukai Mofa Rima Veleya. Veteleya, Lifnei again. Lifnei mi ata, Otit Litin Din Lecheshbon. Before whom we are destined to what? Give a judgment and an accounting. So it says that we judge ourselves before Baruch Hu. So the Mishnah says that after 120, we are destined to judge ourselves. But who will be in the courtroom while we judge ourselves? Melech Malchi Amlochim Akodesh Baruch Hu. You have it in Lishev, Akodesh Baruch Hu. God is called the King of Kings, the Holy One, blessed be He. So the Mishnah is saying that we judge ourselves after death. So what has it got to do with what? with accepting the Torah. So if you look at side number two, how we can personally receive and accept the Torah. How can we do that? The Mishnah says that we should judge every person favorably. In source number two, la don la kafschus. Rav Kook says that the Mishnah that tells us to judge every person favorably, you sold ha Torah, Musa Yira. The foundation of Torah and Musa Yira is to judge what every person favorably. Why is it so important to judge every person favorably? <coughs> so let's take a look at source number three. This is from Tractate Brachot. Another statement by Ben Zoma. On the gratitude for the efforts of others, source number three, who Hoyoime used to say, Oreach Tov Maoime, what does a good guest say? A person was invited for a meal, what does a good good guest say? Kama Trochois Torah Balabai Shili, how much trouble my host took for my sake. He's such a nice host. Kama Bossa Hevi Lafana, he brought me such delicious meat, chopped liver and all delicious dishes before me. Kama yayin havilafanai, how much wine he brought before me. Kama gluskois havilafanai, delicious uh, cakes and rolls he brought before me. The kol ma'ashe tarach, and all the trouble that my host took for me, loy tarach ela b'shvili. He did it only what? For my sake to please me. So you done the kafschus. He made such a beautiful meal. He did it what? All for my sake. That's a good guest. Aval oreach ra maoyme. What does a bad guest say? Ah, huh? should say nothing. Ma torach torach balabai zazer. What trouble did the souls take for me? Pasachas echalti. I ate only one roll. I only ate one piece of meat. I only drank one cup of wine. And all the trouble that my host took, it wasn't for my sake. Whose sake was it, Moshe? For his 
says, <laughs> He made the lavish meal for his wife and children, and I just happened to be there. But he didn't really mean me. So that's a bad guest. A good guest is Don Le Kafschus. That when a host invites me for a meal and he makes a lavish meal, he does it for my sake, not just for his own sake. So it's very important to judge every person favorably. Now, what has it got to do with Matan Torah? So if you see source 3a, Avram, see that source 3a? We're going to read on Shu this morning, Pashas Yisroi. It says, Ayered Hashem al Har Sinai. God, in order to give us the Torah, what did God do? He descended on Mount Sinai. What's the message God descended? Kaviyochel, God lowered himself. Hashem bent down to give us the Torah. So why did God write that about himself? God is all over. Why does he say that he bent down to give us the Torah? Why is that important? To teach that what? Valachta bedrachav. The tafkid of a Jew is to walk in God's ways. Remember Groucho Marx walks this way? The posseg in Devarim, that our tafkid is to imitate and walk in God's ways. So when God gave us the Torah, what did he do? It says God came down on the mountain. He bent down to us to accommodate us. So if we want to follow in his footsteps, we can personally receive the Torah by bending down to help lift someone up. God bent down Kaviyochel to help lift us up. So we have to imitate him. So we can personally accept the Torah, receive the Torah by bending down to help lift someone up. As God bent down to lift us up. The best way to do that is to what? Judge favorably. And if you look at source number four from Tractate Shabbat, so if we give someone the benefit of the doubt, we're not helping him, Avram, who are we actually helping? Look at source number four. Mesech the Shabbat, Tony Rabbanan, the rabbis taught in Abraisa, Hadon Chavero Lekafschus, Don Oisla Lekafschus. One who judges his friend favorably, instead of being harsh and judgmental, he himself is judged favorably. It's Mida Keneged Mida. Here, if you judge others favorably, then it's called a boomerang. Then God will judge you favorably. And you look at source number 4a, Pashis Kedoshim, there's a puzzle in source number 4a, Bitzedek Tishpait Amitecha. In righteousness you shall what? Judge your friend. So that means not only a judge, but every person throughout his daily life and day, we're always judging other people. And sometimes we are harsh and judgmental. But the Mishnah, the Pasuk says, B'tzedek tishpat amisecha. What does that mean, B'tzedek tishpat amisecha? It's not just talking to a judge. But you shall judge, every one of us shall judge our friends with righteousness. And the Gemara in Shavuos says, Ledon chavero de kafschus. This posseg and pashis kedoshim. How does a person become holy? Many ways. One way is, B'tzedek tishpat amitecha. By judging others favorably, that's how we attain kedusha. And the Ovois, the Mishnah Ovois tells us, Have it done kal adam lekafschut. You shall judge every person what? favorably and by doing that we make sure that what that God judges us favorably and that's the way to attain Kiddusha and that's the way to get ready for Matan Torah now, if you look at source number six see it Avram source number six yeah. recognizing that judging other people favorably and fairly is for most of us so difficult that we need what God's help to help us do it so before beginning his morning prayers, the 18th century Hasidic rabbi Elimelech of Lizinsk would beg God, may I see the good traits of others and not, and not what? Defects. Their defects. So that's the way to
to get ready for Matan Torah. Now the Mishnah always tells us, make for yourself a Rav, acquire a friend, and judge every person favorably. Now we know when the three different ideas in the Mishnah, Larry, there has to be what? Connection. The Mishnah always says, make for yourself a Rav, acquire a friend, and oh, by the way, judge every person favorably. What has it got to do in the same Mishnah? Between what? Getting a friend, getting a Rav, and judge other people favorably. Avram, they don't seem to be what? Connected. And we know when they're the same Mishnah, they have to have a connection. What is the connection over here? How does it play out? The Mishnah is saying, if you want to have a friend and a Rebbe, make sure you judge other people favorably because people will always disappoint you. Even your Rav and even your good friend will disappoint you. So if you want to have a Rebbe and a friend, make sure what? That you judge people favorably because if you don't judge them favorably, you don't give them a benefit of the doubt, you want to have a friend, you want to have a Rav. Guy made a wedding, he forgot to invite you, or the Rav made a wedding, he forgot to invite you. He didn't invite you, you feel bad, give him the benefit of the doubt. The dog ate the invitation. It happens sometimes, Chava. It got lost in the mail. Make excuses. It's, it's, it's a true story. I mailed a check to you, Shurin, from Pisgat Zev. They got it a year later. I'm not joking. A year later, they called me up, had to come and write a new check because the check is not good a year later. That's pretty good, actually. Right? From Pisgat Zev to Yeshua, and how far is it? I think it's three kilometers. It took only one year. So it, it, it does happen. You can get started from that from the year before. What? <laughs> that's snail mail. Right? right? That's snail mail, right? But it does happen. It does happen. Judge, he didn't invite you to the wedding. Don't be upset. Maybe he forgot. Maybe the, the dog ate the invitation. Maybe it what? It got lost in the mail. So if you make excuses for others, when they disappoint you, God will make excuses for you when you disappoint him. Avram, how do I know that? It's called the boomerang. See the boomerang? And we have it on source number four. Okay. See that? Back on source number four. Avram, Masech the Shabbat. Tony Rabbanan. Hadon Chaveru Lekavzchus, one who judges his friend favorably, source number four, God judges him favorably. And we see this in Tanakh. But therefore it's very important, and therefore the Mishnah puts the idea of acquiring a friend and a Rebbe with being judging people favorably, giving the benefit of the doubt, not to be so harsh and judgmental. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody forgot he forgot your birthday, forgot to invite you. He's having a bad hair day. Give him the benefit of the doubt. And this idea, because otherwise you won't have a friend, you won't have a Rebbe. There's a puzzle in Tilim 97. The secret to being happy, Chava, is explain rather than complain. Instead of complaining, my friend let me down, my Rebbe let me down, people will always let you down, because it's human nature, what, that people are ungrateful. But the secret to being happy is to explain rather than complain. And there's a post who can tell him 97, What does that mean? Light is planted for the tzaddik, and those people with a straight heart are always besimcha. What straight heart? Hmm? What's the secret to being happy? Psalm 97. Those that have a yishrei leiv are always besimcha. What do you mean have a straight heart? You ever met a crooked heart? You meet everybody in Israel, they ask you, for, you, you ask for directions. They say, yishar, yishar. Adasof. What does a straight heart mean? And what does that mean with Simcha? The Targum on this puzzle in Tillam 97, Simcha, the Targum says, Literitse Liba. Yiddish? Literitse Liba Simcha. 
if you're always making excuses for people that disappoint you, instead of blaming them, you make excuses even though it seems far-fetched, that person will always be what? Besimcha. Targum says that. I know I could complain, but explain it away rather than complain. Be happy because people will always disappoint you. So instead of what? Being upset, make excuses for the lapses. Isn't that amazing? Maybe they forgot, they didn't get the message. Because if you don't make excuses, you won't have a friend or a Rebbe. There's an amazing story, Avram, between Ramosha Feinstein and uh, of Aaron Cutler. They had a falling out. What's new, right? Great rabbis have a falling out. So Aaron Cutler made a wedding and he did not invite Ramosha Feinstein. Ramosha Feinstein came anyway. Uninvited! What did he say? What did he say? He said uh, the invitation got lost in the mail or maybe the dog ate it. Now, even though he knew it's not true, but he came anyway, and Rabbi Aaron was very happy to see him. They embraced, because he made excuses. That's the key to be happy, is always to put a positive spin on negative events. But it didn't work so good for a guy Park Hong from when he went to that party. OK. Whom? Park Hong from when he went to the party that turned out. I mean, no. Bar 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 no, no, no. Bar Hong from. Bar Hong from. OK. OK. <laughs> always put a positive spin on negative events as the Mishnah says <laughs> who is truly rich someone that's happy and he's always making excuses when other people want to disappoint him that's pretty amazing now where do we see that if you make excuses for people where do we see that what that it helps you. So the Chafetz Chaim tells us something amazing. The Mishnah says, judge every person favorably because the life you save may be your own. Mm -hmm. hmm? Now what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? So the Baal Shem Tov says something amazing. When King David sinned with Bathsheba, remember that? Did God punish him right away? No. God sent Nosan Hanavi to give him a parable about a rich man and a poor man. The rich man stole the last lamb of the poor man. So he comes to him, Nosan, with the case, and he tells David, Judge, what's the punishment of this rich man? So David says, for such an outrage for stealing the last lamb of this poor person, David says he's Chayev Mita. Even though when you steal, you're not Chayev Mita, but a king can rule extrajudiciously. It's such an outrage that this rich man did to the poor man that I decree what? Death upon this rich man. So what did Nosan Anavi say? Atoho Ish. You the man. You the man. You judge yourself. So the Vashento points out a Zohar, why is this recorded in Tanakh? Tanakh is not a history book. Tanakh is God's GPS for the year 2019. Why is this recorded in Tanakh? That King David was given a, uh, a fictitious story about a rich man, poor man, and then he judged, and then Nosson and Avi says, Ata Ish. Why is that important? What? So the Zohar says something amazing that this is, happens to every person. If Dovod HaMelech would not be so harsh and judgmental on this fictitious rich man, then God would not be so harsh and judgmental on him. But since Dovod was so harsh with his judgment, he didn't realize that the person that he was judging and condemning was what? Himself. So the Zoyar says every person is that person. After 120, if you go back to the Mishnah, Avram, go back to the Mishnah, side number one. 
Kavya Mahamal Aloimer. It's underlined in yellow. Lifnei mi ata oti liten din the cheshbon. Before whom are you destined to give a judgment accounting? We judge ourselves. How do we know that? Didn't King David judge himself? But he didn't realize that he was what? Judging himself. So after 120 says the Zohar, God will give us a tick. How do you say tick in English? A file. And the file will say John Doe. Or Plony Ben Plony. Right? And then, when we give a judgment, God will say, Ataho Ish. You the man. Because Tanakh Chava doesn't tell me any stories. Tanakh is God's GPS. So, B'Tzedek Tishpa Damisecha. Judge every person favorably. Don't be so judgmental. Be kind and make excuses for other people. Because the way you judge others is ultimately the same way that you will what? Judge yourself. Isn't that amazing? If you refuse to hear evil about others, so God will refuse to hear evil about you on Judgment Day. Even though a person is guilty, but he doesn't want to hear lush and horror about somebody else, then God will not want to hear bad things about him either. That's just amazing. The Mishnah says, Do not judge your friend until you reach his place. We would say in English, do not judge somebody unless you what? Walk, in, walk in his shoes. Can you really walk in somebody's shoes? Huh? Because the way you judge others is exactly the way Hashem will judge you. That's just an incredible idea. If we judge others strictly, then God forbid we will judge ourselves strictly. Because after death, the midosh that we inculcate within us remains with us. Only the body dies. But feelings, emotions, character traits, that lives beyond the grave because that's not physical. So if a person was harsh and judgmental with others throughout his life, that midah becomes part of his neshama. So when he's given a tick to judge, we judge ourselves with the, with the, X, the X files, Chava. Right? And we'll give a harsh judgment and God will say, Chas v'sholom ish, as King David was told. But if we inculcate into us the midah of judging people favorably and making excuses, so that becomes part of our eternity as well. So after 120, when Hashem will give us a tick and judge, we're used to a lifetime of judging favorably, then we will judge others favorably, others favorably, then we are going to what? Judge ourselves favorably as well. So when someone upsets you and disappoints you, give them the benefit of the doubt because the life you save, what? will be your own will be your own so we keep saying judge favorably judge favorably the life you save may be your own that's our challenge to give the benefit of the doubt even though when it doesn't seem to be any excuses so we rehearse and we rehearse and we rehearse right but then when someone disappoints us Reminds me of, of, a, uh, of a story, and all my stories are true, but some didn't happen yet. There's this off-off-Broadway play, Avram, here, off-off-Broadway, off, off Broadway. and they were looking for a part, for a small part. In the play, Yiddish Chanoch, a cannon goes boom, and the person is supposed to say, Hark, I hear the cannon roar. That's his line when he hears the cannon go off. So for six weeks he's rehearsing, He's waiting for his part. The cannon goes boom, and he's supposed to say what? Hark, I hear the cannon roar. Hark, I hear the cannon roar. He's rehearsing for six weeks. Off, off Broadway. So finally, the opening night. Ah, the opening night. He's excited, this guy, with a small part. He's waiting there in the wings. 
And then they wheel a cannon out onto the stage and the cannon goes boom. And he says, what the heck was that? <laughs> hmm? So we rehearse, judge favorably, judge favorably. But then when someone hurts and disappoints us, instead of saying, hark, I hear the cannon roar, what do I say? What the heck was that? Right? <coughs> So we have to rehearse if we were generous with others in our lifetime, forgiving with others, then we will be forgiving with ourselves. But if a person was always demanding and harsh, exacting with others, then God forbid, that's how we will judge ourselves as well, because the midos that we acquire over in our lifetime live on beyond the grave, because the midos is not physical. Only the physical body dies. But how do you say midos in English? The character traits live on beyond the grave. So this is a very important message of uh, judging favorably and something that we can do personally in our lives in order to what? To, uh, to ac accept the Torah on our level. On our level. Yehuda mentioned Kamsa Bar Kamsa, right? If he would have judged favorably, things would have turned out completely different. Unfortunately, it was not the case. And it, it led to the Churban. That led to the Churban. The book of Eov, the book of Job, Job comes very close to blaspheming God. And his friends are very upset with him. But God, instead of God defending the friends, who does he defend? Eov. God is Olam Yitzchus on Eov. The Gemara Babasra says, the book was written, that God does not hold anybody responsible what he says in times of great stress or anguish or pain. So God says, I understand the way Eov feels. I'm making excuses for him. He didn't mean to blaspheme me. But he has such terrible anguish, pain, and stress that therefore I'm going to make excuses for him. This is what God said about Job and why the book was written. Judge your friend favorably and that's the way to be Kedoshim Tiyu. It's very difficult. It is very difficult. You ever wonder why, Chava, that Kever Rochel of all the, the, the graves of the saints and the mamas and the papas, the most popular grave is Kever Rochel, by far. And even when we could not go to the Moratamach Pela from 1948 to 1967, we could not go to Moratamach Pela. But the Kever Rochel, we were always able to go. You ever wonder why? It was more important for us. Why? Why is Rochel the most important? And why is it so popular? There's an amazing Rashi in Pashis Vayechi. You ever wonder why Yosef Atzadik, after he became Viceroy of Egypt, never contacted his father? You know your father loves you, he's worried, sick. You're the viceroy of Egypt. Can't you send dad an SMS, a WhatsApp, an email? Dad, I'm okay, don't worry, nothing. You ever wonder why? Viceroy of Egypt, send a message to your father that you're okay, nothing, garnished. Dad, no email? So send a slave, how far to take a slave on a camel? Right? Or on a horseback, to come from Can Egypt to Canaan. How many days is it by horseback? Huh? Send a what? <laughs> he never contacted his father. Rashi makes an amazing statement, Pashas Vayechi. He blamed his father. He blamed his father. Rashi says, "My son, I know you're upset with me. You never contacted me all of these years because you accused me in your heart of disrespecting your mother." That I buried her in, what do you say in English, a potter's field, potter's grave? Huh? Rather than with himself. Rather than Marcella, you buried her on the side of a lonely road over there. 
all of these years you had it in your heart for me, my son. Rashi and and therefore you never contacted me. But my son, you misjudged me. The reason I buried there on that lonely road in the middle of nowhere, because Hashem told me to bury her there. Because centuries later, when the Jews will be going to exile, when the Buzaratan, the chief of the Buchanetza, will take the Jews into exile on the road to Babylon, where they're going to pass Avram. That lonely, isolated road where what? Where Rochel is buried. And Rashi quotes the Midrash that Rochel will come out from her grave and be mitpalel. Vishavu banim, vishavu banim likvolam. That the final redemption will only come in the schus of Rochel. So therefore I buried her there, not because I disrespected your mother. I wanted to take her into the... But Hashem said, bury her there on this isolated lonely road. Because when the Jews go into exile, they're going to pass that lonely isolated road with Rochel and buried there in the middle of nowhere. And she will be mit Palel. That the Jewish people what, will come back to Pisgat Zev. I mean to Kiyat Moshe. My son, all of these years you misjudged me. You thought that I disrespected your mother. Keva Rochel is an eternal monument to judge favorably, even your own father and your mother. To judge favorably. Did Yosef in his wildest dreams, did he know that Hashem commanded his father to bury his mother in Potter's field? Yosef thought that his father just didn't respect his mother enough. If he would have known that Hashem commanded to bury him, he wouldn't be upset. My son, Yaakov, said, you misjudged me. Kei Rochel is an eternal monument to judge every person favorably, even though it seems so what? Moshe far-fetched. So far-fetched. Isn't that amazing? You never know the whole story. Don't be so judgmental. You never know what's going on by somebody else. What, what, what a message to every one of us in order to guarantee that we judge ourselves favorably we must judge others favorably so Kei Rachel, the great Yosef HaTzadik he didn't contact his father all these years Rashi says in the Midrash because he accused his father of not giving his mother the final kavod but little did Yosef know that what that what? It wasn't Yaakov's idea. Hashem commanded him to bury over there. On the side of the road. Because when the Jews go into exile, they'll pass that lonely grave. Rachel will be with Palel. So Yaakov, so Yosef should have said, Dad, if that's the case, I'll bury you next to Ma on the lonely, on the lonely road as well. So you can also be with Palel for them. You could have said that. If that's what Hashem wants, then why should I take your body tomorrow so I pay well? Let me, you, be, let me bury you next to m my mother on that lonely road so when the Jews pass into exile, you'll also daven for them. Get a question, David? He didn't say that. Why not? Because the final gula will only come not in Yaakov's chus, not in Abraham's chus. Rachel. Only in Rachel's chus. Yeshava ban Gvulam is only Rachel Imenu. Why? What's so special that the final gula, God tells Jeremiah, that the final gula will come in the schus of what? Yaakov's tefillah won't help. Abram's tefillah won't help. Mindel, whose tefillah will help? Only Rachel Imenu. Jeremiah says so. The prophet, not the bullfrog. All right? What's so special about Rachel, Larry? Hmm? Rachel gave ah, what? She, she gave her sister the chasmut. Go ahead. Because um, Leah wasn't supposed to marry Yaakov first. Right. Well, at all. At all. At all. At all. <clears throat> but she allowed her to ma be married to him first, and she never knew that Yaakov would take on the rebound. 
when she gave over the simanim, she was giving up the man she loved forever. She never knew that Yaakov would take her on the rebound. She was willing to give up the man that she loved, not to shame her sister. <coughs> to spare her sister shame and humiliation. She gave over, how do you say simanim in English? Signs. The signs. And for all she knows, Yaakov would be upset with her. He would, wouldn't take her on the rebound. She's willing to give up a lifetime of happiness and love to spare her sister shame and humiliation. In God's eyes, that's more dear and important, more than what? Than like Kedat Yitzchak. It's pretty amazing. To save someone's shame and humiliation, right? To be mavater. How do you say to be mavater in English? To give up what's real. Yaakov was supposed to be her husband. But that would cause shame and humiliation and embarrassment to a sister. So she's willing to forego a lifetime of happiness. Yeah, she never knew Yaakov would take her on the rebound. Just to save her sister shame and humiliation and pain. And in God's eyes, the final gula will come just for that act. That act of vatranut. What a powerful message. You had a question? Rabbi, isn't there a point where um, someone betrays you over and over? Oh, you're not supposed to take abuse. And right? So like, stay away from that person. Just like Yosef. Right? So don't deal with that person. So just like Yosef, I mean, didn't he... Yosef no. misjudged his father. That's why he never well, contacted I, I, him. I thought you had made another point once that, Yosef, that uh, Yaakov knew. He knew what the brothers had done. Did he know? He didn't know, but that doesn't explain Yosef's behavior when he became the leader of Egypt not to send the message, Dad, I'm okay, don't worry. He must have known his father was worried sick about him. But Yaakov said, I know you didn't contact me because you accused me falsely of disrespecting and dishonoring your mother when it wasn't my idea to bury you here on the lonely grave. Hashem told me to do that. So Kei Rachel is an eternal monument that even when it looks far-fetched, Avram, always judge others favorably, even your own parents. They didn't do right by you. All your complaint against your parents, you have to make excuses. The right? To make excuses, right? They were having a bad hair day. Right? They didn't mean it. And if you make excuses for them, then on Judgment Day, God will make excuses for us, Avram. I think it's called Mida Keneget Mida. What a powerful message. What we can do in order to accept the Torah. To bend. Didn't God bend down to us? He gave us the Torah. Again, look at source 3a. Vayered Hashem al Har Sinai, Avram. Source 3a. We're going to read that on Shavuot's morning. Pashas Yitra, Vayered Hashem al Har Sinai. God came down. What do you mean he came down? God is all over. What do you mean he came down? Moshe, what does it mean? I have it in English today. You see that 3a? Yeah. Hashem bent down to us. So we want to walk in his ways. We can personally see the Torah by bending down to others. Right? Someone did us wrong, we bend down. We are mevater. Wow. By judging favorably, even though it's very, very difficult. And because it's so difficult, therefore the reward is what? So great. The reward is so great. That's pretty amazing. Right? As you see in source number four, Avram, even though we don't deserve a good judgment, but if we are judge others favorably when they don't deserve it, then God will judge us favorably when we don't deserve it as well. That's pretty amazing. So when we judge favorably, we're not doing the guy a favor. Who are we doing a favor? Ourself. I think it's called boomerang in English. The way we behave, a mishtem sota. The way we measure and judge others is the way God measures and judges us. Neither can I get me down. Wow. That's pretty amazing. But what we learn from here that 
we actually do judge ourselves. That's what the Mishnah says. You see in side number one, that we actually, Avram, it's repeated twice. In side number one, it's repeated again. The Mishnah repeats it. It's underlined, I think, in yellow. Lifnei, source number one. Lifnei mi atta osi lidin din v'cheshbon. Lifnei melech malchei hamlochim hakodesh baruch hu. So we do judge ourselves, but the way we judge others will determine how we judge ourselves. Because that character traits that we develop in our lifetime becomes part of our soul. So if we judge others favorably, we will judge ourselves favorably. But if God forbid we are harsh and judgmental with others, that also becomes part of our eternal soul. And then when God gives us a tick, the tick will say, John Doe, God said, do me a favor, can you judge? I'm busy now. And then God will say, Atoish. Because that's exactly what Nostan Anovi said to what? To King David. So every one of us is that person. Because Tanakh doesn't tell me any stories. Tanakh is GPS. Ato ha'ish. So it's difficult. Avon, we have to rehearse. Hark, I hear the cannon roar. So when the final opening night comes, we're going to say, what the heck was that? Right? There's so many stories of, uh, of judging, misjudging, and we didn't know the circumstances. Right? So the answer is that we must make excuses for when people mistreat us, because then God will make excuses when we mistreat him, chas Is that a powerful message that we learned today? Pretty amazing. And the Chofetz Chaim says, if you judge others favorably, you're doing the mitzvah after Racha Kamocha. That you're loving your fellow Jew because you want others to judge you favorably. So when you judge a fellow Jew favorably, you are loving him because you would want to be treated the same way, right? Right. So the answer is we never know the whole story. We don't know what's going on with someone else, right? But mida keneged mida, mida keneged mida. So God, if we look away when someone disappoints us, then God will look away when we disappoint him. Isn't that an incredible idea? Hmm? Easier said than done, we have to work on it, right? We have to rehearse. Avram, over and over again. Judge favorably, judge favorably, judge favorably, because I'm not doing that guy who hurt me a favor, I'm doing myself a favor. It's pretty incredible, right? For more of Rabbi Sprecher's teachings, visit rabbisprecher.com.